Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. In the last session, we have discussed the issue of asymmetric information and market failure in finance market. And we introduced the concept called adverse selection. We discussed the concept in detail. And we also said that at that time, we, there is another concept called moral hazard that also we, that we are going to discuss in this session. But prior to that, uh, we will continue complete the discussion on adverse selection of this outcome that the selection bias outcome, uh, let us complete this discussion. So the Lehman's problem, so how adverse selection influences financial structure, so we have seen that, we have discussed in the previous class that if quality cannot be assessed, buyer is willing to pay at most a price that reflects the average quality. And subsequently, we also uh, we discuss this issue in the context of lemons markets. So we have seen that there are firms, good firm and bad firm. Suppose uh, an investor can't distinguish between good firms with the high expected profits and low risk and bad firms with the low expected profits and high risk. And then this would lead to the collapse of the finance market. Similar problems can arise uh, in the bond market as well. So we have seen that the bonds, uh, one of the factors associated with the bonds is its uh, default risk. So what if an investor, if an investor considers purchasing a corporate bond instrument in the bond market? So uh, we can see that if its interest rate is high enough to compensate uh, the investor for average default risk of the good and bad firms trying to sell the debt, then only he or she is going to buy a bond, right? So investors, he or she should be compensated uh, with the risk premium interest rate. So we have seen that market consists a comprise of firms with uh, high default risk and uh, firms with a low, low default risk. And what we can see here is that the investors, their willingness to accept uh, is the interest rate of the average uh, default risk, that is the expected price, that the uh, mean average of the interest rate of high default risk firms interest rate uh, and low default risk firms interest rate. So how about the willingness to pay of the firms? So you can see that the willingness to pay of the firms, uh, the low risk firm, do you think that they are willing to pay more? No, because economic uh, fundamentals, the default risk is better for them. Uh, their default risk is uh, low and the project activities, the economic and project activities that they are going to undertake is also in a better condition. So because of that, the willingness to pay off interest rate by low default risk firm uh, is the low interest rate. Hence, uh, if the market determines if the uh, interest rate in the market consists of both the low risk and high risk firm is going to be the average default risk interest rate then in this scenario we can see that the firms with the low default risk is unlikely to borrow at the higher rate for them uh, this is a, a, the uh, mean rate, the expected rate, the, the average interest rate, the average default risk, risk rate is higher than their willingness to pay. So they think that they should be getting capital from the bond market at a low interest rate. That means they will back out from the market. And how about the willingness to pay of interest rate by high default risk firm? So we know that they are already aware of, of, of their uh, default risk, they are already high risk. They are already aware of uh, that means the project activities that they are going to undertake that they are undertaking uh, is not in a better condition. So what they will feel, uh, they they will be happy to uh, pay the average default risk premium uh, rate interest rate because actually they have to pay a high interest rate, but they will be happy to pay uh, the average the interest rate corresponding to average default risk. So what is going to happen here? You can see that if the market behaves in this way that means 
low default risk firm backing out from the market and then the market will be over represented by high default risk firm. So eventually you know that at this high interest rate only the firms with the high default risk firms will be uh, prevalent there, existent there. So as a result uh, the lenders also are aware actually don't think that lenders won't be aware. So they also will be aware that uh, the market is now over represented by only the high risk firm and they think that is better not to lend in this market even though they are getting high interest rate but the risk is that the high default risk there is no guarantee that they, they will pay back right so these issues actually because of all these the investors will think that they, they will probably uh, not buy any bonds at all because of this issue. So this problem uh, explains fact number two that means issuing marketable debt and equity securities uh, is not the primary way in which businesses finance their operation. So because of the asymmetric information and the resulting adverse selection problem this actually in fact explains fact number two that means issuing marketable debt and equity securities is not the primary way in which businesses finance their operations. It also partially explains the fact that uh, stocks are not the most important sources of external financing for businesses because we have seen that in the equity market firms with high expected profit and low risk uh, they won't be getting uh, the expected IPO amount uh, the IPO the price of uh, expected uh, price for IPO they won't be getting that is corresponding to their good standing that means high expected profit and low risk. Let's now move uh, what are the tools that can be used to so resolve the adverse selection problems in uh, finance markets. So, the solution to the adverse selection problem in financial market is to reduce uh, asymmetric information by furnishing people some supplying funds with more details about the individual or firms seeking to finance their investment activities. So one way for saver lenders to get this information through the private companies that collect and produce information distinguishing good firms from bad firms and then sell it to the uh, lenders or the demanders of bonds or the, the subscribers of shares equities. So that means one of the solution here is private production and sale of information. So companies for example the eliminate companies like Tanders and Poor's and Moody's and Value Line for example all these agencies in the US what they do is they gather information on firms balance sheet positions and investment activities and publish this data and sell them to the potential buyers that the individual libraries and financial intermediaries who are is going to who are is interested to invest in the finance market. However, the system of private production of a production and sale of information uh, does not completely solve the adverse selection problem in securities market you know why because there is free rider problem. What is free rider problem here? It occurs free rider problem occurs when people who do not pay for information take advantage of the information that the other people have paid for. The free rider problem suggests that private sale of information is only a part partial solution uh, to the adverse selection problem. So suppose uh, you have bought some private information uh, sold by for example these agencies. What is going to happen here? So when you follow you bought this private information uh, then as compared to others in the market you have some advantage uh, relatively compared to advantage about information in the market and when you start utilizing or make use of this information then accordingly that means based on this information you are in a better position to distinguish uh, which company's IPO is better uh, which company's bond is better so accordingly whatever investment activities that you are doing uh, suppose uh, the, because you already bought private information uh, in this scenario what I will do is that suppose I also want to invest in the market equity market and bond market uh, here uh, what I will do that uh, since I am not paying for this private information uh, I will just try to free ride the information that you have bought and I will just follow you 
uh, whatever investment activities you are doing because you already bought private information so i will just follow your uh, investment activities whichever bond that you are buying i will be buying that and whichever ipo or uh, bonds stocks that you are buying i am going to buy that so what is going to happen so it's not only me many people who think that uh, this particular group individual or group of uh, individuals or firms uh, they had access to private information and all others they will try to follow that then that means whichever bond you are buying uh, or investing uh, others are also going to demand same uh, bond so as a result you know that that bond price will be increasing when the bond price will be increasing you already know that um, the uh, interest rate Uh, for that bonds will be declining so as a result uh, since you already paid for this information but uh, what the net advantage that you are expected to get because others are free riding or following you uh, then because of that um, uh, it will increase the demand for those securities and hence price profit opportunities are eliminated here so this is one of the key problem with the sale of private protection and sale of information so in order to overcome uh, another solution is government regulation to increase information so one we can see that to avoid free rider problem could financial market benefits from government intervention you know by to in order to overcome uh, the free rider problem so government could for instance produce information to help investors uh, distinguishing good firm for the from the bad firm but you know that uh, that all actually politically difficult propositions because government is not supposed to make it uh, public or government agencies not make to public that actually uh, these firms are high risk and these firms are really bad firms or bad risk that the high uh, the, these firms are bad risk and they, 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 these firms are uh, good risk like that uh, th- that is not a correct proposition anyway so in this case what government can do that government can ask firms to reveal uh honest information government can ask the firms to publish the information about their balance sheet through an independent audit using an independent audit uh, they about their balance sheet and investment activities whatever is uh, what all uh, required information about a firm that actually the government agencies can ask the firms to reveal it, they can make it uh, compulsory that you need to undergo uh, independent audit and reveal all this information to the general public so for example in the us the securities uh, exchange commission is the government agency that requires firms selling their securities to undergo independent audits in which accounting firms certify that the firm is adhering to standard accounting practices and other countries also follow this practice for example in india uh, the security and exchange board of india Uh, security sebi sebi asks all the companies listed companies uh, to publish their b- balance sheet and also under th- that is where the through going through the independent audit balance sheet which is uh, audited by independent audit agencies so what we are we can see here is that we cannot uh, completely eliminate the problem of adverse selection problem what we can do here is that or the government can do here is that it can reduce the adverse selection issue or the lemons problems so what the issue here is that managers have tremendous incentives to hide their company's problem uh, making it hard for investors to know the true value of firms even some of the suppose some of if there is some debt the debt obligation of the company uh, sometimes they may hide it or they may postpone it or similarly the profit uh, there also sometimes they may hide or they will little bit make some manipulation so they have tremendous information because we have seen in one of the previous session that the say the stocks price uh, is mainly a function mostly a function of the dividend right dividend means that the profit so accordingly managers will try their level best they have incentives in fact to hide uh, some of the company's problems so that means that everything cannot be captured by the balance sheet uh all these uh, yes planes fact number 5 which we said that the financial system is among the most heavily regulated sectors of the economy so because of all these things actually there is government regulation uh, to increase information or to reduce uh, asymmetric uh, information 
Another tool to reduce the problem of adverse selection is the financial intermediation. So in the used car market, we have seen that most used cars are not sold directly by uh, one individual to another. So an individual who considers buying a used car might pay a privately produced information by subscribing to some magazines for example uh, who is providing the information about a particular brand uh, which actually require less repair or uh, who whichever brand actually uh, has the good value, uh, good uh, less risk in fact that means they are relatively better quality. So all this information they subscribe to, they used to subscribe to the private information and they try to do and actually more organized way or more formal way of doing this one is uh, instead of going for a private information here is better to go for a used car dealer in the used car market to solve the lemon problem. So the dealers uh, who are more um, who have expertise in the field who can distinguish uh, good quality and bad quality car uh, they actually uh, this deal is is one of the solution to resolve to address the adverse selection problem in the in the car market so in india you know that there is true value maruti true value and mahindra uh, used car markets etc so here uh, you know that in the used car dealer what they do obviously they have more expertise in the field then they have they produce information and charge different prices for different quality in addition they also provide warranty and the buyers because they, since they already established a brand value the, the, the dealers they established a brand value so they have to maintain their value so that they will sell they will try to acquire only those cars that is good quality. If some cars, cars are with bad quality, uh, they will obviously sell it at a low price. They make uh, different prices for different types of car and because, because they have more better, better information about the car which they are going to buy and which they are going to sell. Right. So this is all about in the case of used car market and how about in the case of financial market. So in the case of financial market, what we can see here that uh, in the financial intermediaries play a similar role what used car dealers do in the used car market. So here uh, the financial intermediaries, who is financial intermediary? So a financial intermediary such as a bank for example, uh, a bank becomes an expert in producing information about firms so that it can sort out good credit risk from bad one. And you know that an important element of bank's ability to profit from information it produces is that it avoids the free rider problem by primarily making private loans uh, rather than by purchasing securities that are traded in the open market. So since there are lots of customers for banks for instance, uh, you know that they have lots of information about the financial activities of the uh, their potential their, their uh, customers for example individuals and other firms who are is their customers so they know the um, amount they are depositing in their account and the amount they are withdrawing and the financial activities how they are spending for different activities and the financial flow of these individuals so all the banks are having lots of information about the financial position of each and every uh, individual and firms with uh, who they are ha having having accounts with them transaction with them so in this case they are having private information so unlike uh, other individuals because we say that all these informations are private information indeed right so the information with the bank they are not going to share it with us uh, they are having private information and what they are doing with this using this private information they don't need to worry about free rider problem because they are not sharing this information with the anyone uh, they are in fact using this information for their own business activities uh, because uh, they to make private loans so if they are going to make a private loan loan to a particular individual or firm because they already know what is the default risk uh, based on their financial transaction and other business activities they already know what is the risk of these people or these individuals and these firms so banks they become a uh, screening uh, expert in screening borrowers and then they sell private loan this is not traded and then they don't need to worry about the free rider problem so because of this uh, this explains the fact number three four 
and sixth the role of banks why the fact is that why banks are important lenders uh, in the finance market in the case of external borrowing external funds the role of banks uh, is actually they, they have a really a dominant role significant role considerable role uh, in the finance market so in the case of financial intermediaries because the important thing is that when they do screening and certifying it actually reduce uh, adverse selection problem so because financial intermediaries superior ability to screen and certify borrowers and the banks actually they can supply information to the credit rating agencies to give the credit score of individual borrowers and similarly the credit rating agencies uh, because they also have business expertise in assessing the default risk at the financial conditions and the balance sheet the overall the financial conditions and the investment activities of the firms uh, they they are also having expertise in rating or giving uh, credit rating uh, for individuals so the, for especially for individual institutional borrowers so credit score is mainly for the individual borrowers and rating is mainly for the institutional borrowers so because of all these things what we can see that the fact number 3 that the indirect finance is more important than uh, direct finance because of indirect finance means actually borrowing through the financial intermediaries we can see that because of uh, the information the information asymmetry and the resulting adverse selection in order to overcome uh, it's better to uh, borrow through financial intermediary instead of directly borrowing from the market by corporations or uh, raising more funds through the ipo the, instead of uh, borrowing from uh, bonds market or instead of borrowing from through uh, in the equity market uh, it is more advisable for the firms to borrow through financial intermediaries and we can also see that uh, banks because they are the most important source of external funds because of the fact is that we just discussed now and we can also see that one of the fact that the sixth fact is that only large well established firms have access in the securities market so we can see here that suppose a better known a corporation is the more information about its activities are available in the marketplace so there is less asymmetry in information so for example the corporations for example like microsoft google coca cola etc so you can see that uh, all these firms are well known corporations right they are the better known the corporation so about the information so these are the about the financial activities what are the investment activities they have been doing all most of them will be widely discussed in the media uh, and there are more and more information available in the public domain so as a result you know that uh, there is less information asymmetry for these firms financial activities financial condition or default risk etc so because of this you can see that uh, large and well established firms have access to more access to securities market and this also explain the branding branding also explains fact number 6 that means the well known corporations uh, they can borrow easily uh, they can raise easily from the market then the final one uh, is the collateral and net worth so collateral means adverse selection actually here interferes with the functioning of financial market only if a lender suffer a loss when a borrower is unable to make loan payments and thereby uh, defaults on the loan so what is collateral means collateral collateral means uh, collateral the property promise to the lender if the borrower defaults actually then it reduces the consequences of uh, uh, default risk and you are aware that actually some of the um, collaterals are automobile uh, house that the mortgage etc so this actually the advantage here is that um, what if uh, if the borrower defaults on a loan the lender can sell the collateral uh, and use proceeds to make up for the losses on the loan for example if you fail to make your mortgage payments then the lender can take the title to your house auction it off and use the receipts to pay off the loan so then you know that actually because of this collateral uh, is one of the 
most important uh, feature, uh, prevalent feature in the uh, finance market, especially in the debt market. So this explains the fact number seven that means collateral is prevalent in debt contracts. Then coming to the net worth, the next one that is the net worth. Net worth means the in the especially the equity capital. Uh, net worth is calculated by the, in, in this way that means assets minus liabilities. Um, that is the net worth of a firm. That is the difference between a firm's assets that means what it owns or is owed and its liabilities that means what it owes can perform a similar role to that of collateral. That means if a firm has a high net worth then, then even if it engages in investments that lead to negative profits and so default uh, on its debt payments, the lender can take title to the firm's net worth, sell it off and use the proceed to recoup uh, some of the loss from the loan. So, in addition, the more net worth a firm has in the first place, the less likely it is to default because the firm has a cushion of assets that it can use to pay off uh, its loan. So here you can see that actually uh, those who are having high net worth, they are having less, le they are, there is less likely for the default, less likely they are to make a default of the loan that they made, they have taken. So that is why it is difficult for new and small business to borrow, means they have the less collateral and they have less net worth. And what we can see here is that actually we can see one of the uh, thing here is that that means only the people who don't need money can actually borrow. Uh, they can borrow from the financial market. For them, uh, they can they, they they can easily borrow. Those who are having high collateral, more collateral, and having uh, high net worth. Actually, I, they don't need money. In fact, so for those people, it is easy for them to borrow from the finance market. So we have completed the discussion of the concept called adverse selection. We also discuss what are the tools to address these problems. And in the next session, uh, let us discuss another aspects of uh, market failure uh, that is called moral hazard. Thank you.